Well, hello and welcome to Understand Men Now. I'm Jonathan Asley of jonathanasley.com and I'm so excited to be shooting this short video for you today. Our topic, dating apps, okay? Dating apps and sites that we see on this. <laughs> All right, really quickly, if, uh, if my content here resonates with you and you need support and help from a coach, check out the link below to a free discovery call to see if working with a coach is right for you. Okay, we're gonna, <laughs> I got so excited I rushed myself. We're gonna talk about dating sites and apps using these little things, okay? <laughs> All right, so it's interesting. Um, I remember going through divorce uh, in my 40s and I thought there was, I heard about this thing called online dating and I thought it was really simple. You could just simply log in and um, literally pick the perfect person for you. Someone would magically appear and you could just live your life happily ever after. And boy, was I in for a surprise. And what's interesting is one of the lessons I learned from online dating, or at least dating in and of itself, was that I learned what I wanted by what I didn't want. Let me repeat that. I learned what I wanted by what I didn't want. So the dating experience actually does help us when we experience the things that we don't want, we get more crystal clear on what we do want, okay? So, all right, so Jonathan, how does this relate to the best and worst dating sites? Well, I'm gonna get to that in a second. And also, this is a piggyback to the video I did yesterday about finding the love of your life in four days. Can you believe it? In four days, you can find the love of your life. So you, you didn't watch my video from yesterday, please, after this, go back and watch that because it's critically important for this. Okay, now, I know a lot of you probably are have tried online dating and many of you are just frustrated pulling your hair out going oh my god this is ridiculous you know why can't we just meet people organically why can't we just meet people in our daily lives yeah wouldn't that be great i mean throw in the pandemic and that just ruined everything but the reality is if you're in for, if you're in your 40s 50s and 60s the likelihood of meeting someone in your daily life is a real challenge and look at i'm someone who works from home the, uh, my chances of meeting the love of my life would be the, the, the burglar, bu, 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 the burglar that comes in, the female burglar that comes in and says, trying when she's stealing my TV, saying, "Hey, you're kind of cute." All right. Now, what fantasy world would that be in? Nonetheless, the reality of meeting organically is a challenge. This is one of the reasons why online dating is so popular. And by the way, over 50% of all new relationships for people in their 40s, 50s, and 60s is happening through an online connection. That's right. Now, that's anecdotal, but I'm telling you, do a little search. When you're on Facebook and you see your friends say, in a relationship, ask them where they met. Over half of the people that post on my page have met through an online dating site or dating app. So I wanna review some of the dating sites and dating apps. Now, I'm gonna talk right, right off the bat about Match.com. Match.com is the number one dating site uh, from a laptop perspective, although they do have an app as well. But what I mean to say is it's the number one site, not only do they own almost every other site out there, OkCupid, okay that sort of, uh, our time, that sort of thing, but they just happen to have the most concentration of people. Now, what makes an online dating site different than an app is, even though Match.com does have an app, is that there's a lot more information filled out and there's a lot more characters to write a biography of yourself or a profile of yourself. I think there's over the ability to have over 4,000 characters where in an app, you only have a few characters to express yourself. So one of the advantages of using uh, a site like a Match.com is that there's more information filled out. This way you can filter for the person who's more right for you. Because remember when I said earlier, uh, this is learning about what you don't want by, or what you want by what you don't want, okay? And of the other sites out there, okay, Cupid's great, lots of questions. eHarmony, I'm not a big fan of it. I mean, it's a great idea, this, this deep, intense questionnaire. The problem is just not enough men and women are on the site to choose from. However, you know what? The barrier to entry for dating sites is that you gotta pay for you gotta pay for it, okay? You gotta cough up some dough. Makes it a little bit more attractive from the perspective of people who use it are more serious, okay? 
Um, and now, let me just say this. Yes, you're going to get scammers. You're going to get flakes. Yes, that's going to happen. And if you want some help on avoiding that, reach out to me because that's my area of expertise as well. All right. So I've covered the dating sites. Oh, by the way, I'm not a big fan of Plenty of Fish. Oh my God, I just feel like... And by the way, I'm an actual user of these sites. So let me just show you. Here's you know, my apps. I don't know if you can see it. You can see Bumble, you can see Tinder, you can see Match, you can see Hinge, uh, you can see The League, just to name a few. Okay, I'm gonna show that again. Okay, I'm an actual user, so I'm sharing this from my personal experience and also from a man's point of view. Okay, so um, I just think uh, plenty of fish is crap. I'm sorry. Um, I, and I just think it's crap because the barrier entry is so low. It's a free dating site. And quite frankly, it's a judgment on my part. I'm judging people. That's not fair. But I, I feel like a lot of emotionally wounded people choose that site. That's a judgment on my part, but that's an observation. Both men and women alike, a lot of emotionally wounded people go to those sites. Now, I, want, I said something earlier. A lot of you are frustrated maybe with online dating. You just want to pull your hair and give up. I need you to adopt a new attitude. I want you to first adopt the attitude from the book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. The subtle art. I'm always recommending books. This is a new book I'm re recommending, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Why am I suggesting this book? And I said a curse word. Is that you got to have a little bit of thick skin. You have to, I mean, not you have to, I mean, I'm judging you. I want to encourage people not to get so hung up on what's wrong with the dating sites and start putting your energy into what's right about the dating sites. What's good about them? And what's good about them is you get access to people you wouldn't have otherwise have in your life. But if you're struggling leaning into that kind of energy, if you're struggling to get into that powerful uh, energy of just um, really looking from a place of gratitude, then I highly recommend my book, what the heck is self-love anyway? Because when you've adopted a self-love attitude, you're not caught up on, all right, yes, there's a lot of crap in the dating realm, but there's also a lot of potential. And when you shift your mindset to the potential, instead of focusing on lack, you're gonna have a better chance at success. Okay, now I wanna jump into the dating apps. So, for example, Tinder. Oh, did it pull up? Tinder. There's someone's profile. I don't know who it is. Uh, <laughs> Karina. Um, Tinder. Okay. These are the free dating apps. There's basically Tinder. There's basically Bumble. There's basically Hinge. Okay, Hinge, if you can see that. And I'm on an app called The League. You have to be kind of special to get into The League, okay? But I'm going to talk about Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, and The League for a quick second. Okay, Tinder. This app is the bare bones app of apps. And by the way, dating apps are basically swipe left or swipe right. Swipe left means you're not interested. Once you see the person's profile and swipe uh, right means you're interested. What I don't like about Tinder is they don't offer, other than just a tiny little bio area, they don't offer up much information. So you're really basically going on photographs, okay? Hey, by the way, we men are visual creatures. We're, you know, we're scoping out photographs. Women, you're cre visual creatures as well. And let me just say this, the vast majority of dating apps that uh, uh, profiles I look at as a man, most women's profiles look like this. Oh, I want to stick my finger down my throat. The photographs are terrible quality. They're, they're, they're out of focus, hazy, wearing sunglasses. You can't even tell what they look like. They've got a group of friends and they're buried in there. This is crap. If you want to have, here, I'll show you my uh, profile. I'm going to brag for a second. Okay, my first picture, actually wearing the same shirt. Next picture. Um, oops, next picture, crystal clear, you can see me, next picture, I got a puppy, I'm crystal clear, you can see me, I've got a body shot, and then I got a picture of, uh, oops, picture of me having fun, and a picture of the books I read, okay, 
So why I'm sharing this with you is I've set up a profile the way I'm trying to get a job at the company I want to get a job at. I want the right woman to be seeing me, so I'm very intentional about my profile. Now, what I like about Bumble is Bumble recently just added a new feature where they list your height. They list your, do you drink? Do you, um, do, you do, uh, do you do cannabis? Do you have children? Uh, what's your religion? What's your politics? They added a lot of new features for helping you filter. I love that. In addition, women make the first move. Women make the first move. I actually like that. It gives me the green light. It used to be called dropping the hanky. So when we both swipe, the woman's responsibility is to reach out. I like that because that gives, a, gives them the power to decide whether or not they want to engage in, with me. Now, I get, I get the fact that we both swiped, just like on Tinder both swiped. I like that women get to be in control of this. And again, the benefit, now you might all say, well, the masculine must lead and it's chivalrous that he goes first. No, when you're dating men in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, this whole crap that we're ultra confident alpha males is garbage. As we get older, our childhood wounds and traumas start to surface up and we're just as scared as you. I don't care. Look, at I'm a confident guy and I'm still scared to death. I love it when a woman makes the first move. Now, some of you might say, well, Jonathan, that's feminine of you. It's just being real, ladies. That's not feminine. It's not masculine. It just means I like to feel appreciated just as much as you do. And let me tell you something. When a woman writes a heartfelt message to me, bam, I'm excited. I take charge. I get enthusiastic. I get demonstrative. I get effusive. I lean. I lean in. I'm not leaning back waiting for him. I lean in because you've leaned in. Great approach. Okay, now Hinge is very similar to Bumble in that they now added a, lot, a feature with a lot of questions, your height, your, you know, uh, your drinking, uh, cannabis, that sort of thing. Um, but you don't need to both match to engage with someone. So that makes Hinge a little bit different. I would say they're almost comparable just a little bit different in that you both have to swipe on Bumble, whereas you can engage with someone you haven't swiped with on Hinge. And then with the league, you actually have to go through a deep process. You have to go through this huge questionnaire and <laughs> you have to be in a waiting list for a while. I was on a waiting list for a little while to join league. Um, the league also has some criteria filled out, but I'm gonna tell you something, the amount of people on the league seems a little weak because I'm now getting people that live 500 miles away from me that it used to be all local people. So that's my interpretation of the league. So I kind of like Bumble and Hinge. And I say this from personal experience, ladies. I say this as a user. So if you want to, uh, so I've just given you laid out what I think are some of the best sites. I think Match.com is the biggest, makes it one of the best. Uh, from that perspective, it just there's more people to choose from. And then from the dating apps, uh, Tinder, kind of low barrier. They're all free, but low barrier of entry. Oh, by the way, you can upgrade to pay um, to get some more functionality. But I do like Bumble and Hinge uh, at the next level. All right, I've just given you some insight into the dating sites and apps. I'm sure you have something to say. I'm sure you're going to criticize this video. Knock yourself out. We can criticize online dating all we want. But the reality is, is Roughly 50% of all new people are meeting through an online dating site. So that's anecdotal by my part, but I feel pretty accurate in that for those people in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. And I look at like someone like my son, who's even in his 20s. The only dates he's had in the last year was from a dating app. And he's actually may not have met the love of his life, but he's made some really good friends there too. One of my dearest friends was someone I met 10 years ago on Match.com, and she's one of my dearest friends. We weren't... Uh, we weren't a love connection, but we certainly were, um, we were just in a good place for us. And for the record, I did meet a fantastic woman 10 years on a dating app. We went on a six year journey of a relationship. It didn't go the distance, but you know what? Most amazing experience of my life. So we can judge what's wrong or we can focus on what's right. And let me tell you something. It's better to focus on what's more positive than focus on the negative and maybe adopt that little bit of I don't give a fuck attitude might help you along the way. Hey, take it for what it's worth. This is my assessment of the best and worst dating sites and apps 
uh, for the next year. And this piggybacks on the video that I, I shot yesterday. All right, I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone or a pet or a pillow or a teddy bear and give it a hug of love. Hugs are a great source of love and we can all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now.